Okay, so let's uh, use these metric terms for uh, our theta coordinates, uh, where uh, g10 equals g01 equals zero. So the off diagonal terms are zero, and we will derive uh, the second derivative of r, and let's just use tau, but it's, you can think of it as some parameter, it could just be the regular time. You know, what, what does that look like, and what does the second derivative of theta look like, um, as implied by the geodesic equation. So, the geodesic equation, <coughs> In component form, it looks like this, with the connection terms. We've derived this before. And we know the connection. Um, we've motivated the connection in these terms with the inverse metric. GBK and these partial derivatives. So we want to see what this looks like for uh, a flat space situation where the connections are not zero because we are using uh, polar coordinates. This is GAF. Okay, so look, we're choosing delta equals uh, zero. So we have x zero, which is r, and x one, oops, x one is equal to theta. And so we're evaluating uh, d two x zero and d tau squared. So we have plus gamma, Right, so delta is zero, so this is zero, and then we have to sum on these beta and gamma indices. So we want to evaluate these terms, and uh, they look like, um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, gamma, we have zero, and then, so we'll start to sum on beta, zero and one, so we have zero, gamma, dx, gamma, tau, and this is dx, zero, d tau, plus <clears throat> uh, zero, and we have one for uh, beta, and gamma still goes along for the ride, uh, dx gamma still dx tau, and now dx1 d tau, and so now we sum on gamma, so uh, we get gamma 0, 0, 0, dx0 d tau, dx0 d tau, plus we're still here summing on gamma, so we have gamma zero zero one and dx one d tau dx zero d tau plus now we're here summing on gamma so we get plus uh, gamma zero one zero now dx one d tau and the last term is gamma zero one one dx one d tau dx one d tau and so now we have to evaluate the connections so let's start with gamma uh, zero zero so we have gamma zero zero gamma zero zero one which by uh, symmetry is the same as gamma zero one zero and then we have gamma zero one one so we really have three terms that we have to derive. 
So gamma zero, 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 right? We're using this. That looks like one half G uh, B. We're gonna sum on B, so we have B zero, uh, D G zero B with respect to R or X zero plus D G zero B in X zero or R D G zero zero in X B. <clears throat> so continue with that. So this is um, equal to, uh, now we're summing on B, so we have one half G zero zero uh, D G zero zero X zero plus Same thing, minus dg zero zero x zero. Of course, we know that <clears throat> all of these are zero because g zero zero is just a constant. But if we were to continue this, we would then have plus one half g one zero, right? Because um, we're summing on b. But that, 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 none of this actually matters because G10, there are no off-diagonal terms, so that makes the entire thing zero, although it's really the inverse that is used here. But of course, if the off-diagonal terms on, on G10, you know, if G10 is equal to zero, so will G upper 10 be zero. So there's nothing more to consider here. This whole thing is going to be equal to zero. So let's move on to gamma uh, zero, zero, one. Uh, here we have one half G B zero, uh, D G one B, X zero plus d g zero b x one minus d g one zero of course that's just zero so um again we don't need to really worry about b uh being one because this will be zero so we really have one term here to consider one half G zero zero times G one zero and X zero plus D G zero zero and X one. Of course, that's a constant. That's zero minus D G one zero, which is that's zero. So derivative with respect to R doesn't matter. Plus we have other terms, but they're all zero. So this whole thing becomes zero as well, and so the last connection term, zero, one, one, this will turn out to be non-zero. So we get one half G B zero, uh, D G one B with respect to X one, plus D G one B with X one, minus dg11 back to x b uh, so let's see what we have here again b equals zero is the only one we care about because the b equals to one is zero the g10 upper is zero so here we have g00 dg10 with respect to x1 plus same thing here, minus dg11 with respect to x0. So we have nothing to add there. 
So that's going to be equal to um, <clears throat> let's see. So uh, these two are zero, so there's nothing to take derivatives of. Whereas g11, we know that that's r squared. So uh, g00 is the same as g lower 00, that's just one. So here we have minus a half derivative of r squared with respect to r. So, uh, um, well, let's just write this out. g00 dg11 with respect to x0. And that is minus, so that's minus a half. g00 is 1. Let's just write it out. dg11 with respect to x0 is 2r. And so we get minus r. And so uh, the d2x is 0 in this time parameter. Uh, so the geodesic equation becomes uh, minus r times dx1 in this time parameter. Square equals 0. And so our equation becomes second derivative of r in tau equals r. Uh, x1 is theta, d theta, d tau time squared. So that's the first equation that comes to us in our theta coordinates.